This planning commission meeting to order and stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we're ready to call the roll. Mr. Townsend. Here. Mr. Poole. Ms. Woodard. Here. Mr. Allen. Here. Mr. Hollinsworth. Ms. Mason. Here. Mr. Gregg. Here. Mr. Powell. Yes, here. Ms. Boyd. Here. Seven out of nine members present. We do have a quorum. Okay. Uh, is there a motion for approval of the minutes from January 2nd? Motion to approve. Second. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Those stand approved. Under new business tonight, item number one is a rezoning request from R15 to MRO on R.W. Gordon Drive. Is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? So moved. Okay, I'll take one of those as a motion and a second. <laughs> uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, what do we have on this one? Okay. Sorry for the inconvenience. My technology wasn't working, but I have Not it fixed now. We have a rezoning request from uh, Paul and Isabel Martinez to rezone a piece of property from R15 to MRO. This uh, property is located on R.W. Gordon Drive. Uh, this is the uh, gas department here, and uh, down here is um, the uh, con morning side and the condominiums and apartments. So it's right here. Now, this is owned R10, but it's you know it is a multi-residential use. The the parcel size is uh, 4.96 acres. It's uh, you know, it's, it's big enough uh, to uh, rezone that to MRO. Uh, they are proposing multi-residential and an advanced space on that parcel. It's, it's the existing, there, there used to be a Hispanic church there. That metal building that's on the? Yes, sir. Okay. And so that, that metal building is uh, right here. And so they're going to add office and storage to that, and then they're going to add 41 multi-residential units if it's rezoned to MRO. Uh, that would that would put you know each unit would <coughs> would uh, do about six trips a day, and that would put. 246 more trips a day on R.W. Gordon Drive going out to either one of these entrances here or there depending on which way they wanted to go more than likely most of those trips would go right there because this road is not in really good shape it's a uh, you know, MRO is a residential use. The land use is residential. It's already zoned R15. Um, you know, we're looking for more affordable housing units in Springfield. This will probably meet that bill, but you know, we still have a shortage of apartments. And, uh, you know, they're going at a premium price right now in Springfield. Unless it's on Section 8. Un you know, but Village, it's not Village Greens, is it? Which one? The, the uh, apartment complex over on Greenbar Pod. Clay, where do you live? Legacy, Legacy Village. Legacy Village. You know, those are pretty, 
Those are that are premium. So when we finish this discussion, I'm going to introduce you to somebody. All right. So the bottom line is, is staff sees real, no real issue. Uh, we uh, did they do a <coughs> sewer capacity request? I think so. Yes, I think we. I told them to do that, so I'm assuming they did. So, if if the sewer is available, we we haven't seen that paperwork, but mm -hmm. you you got yeah, it. So the sewer, according to Terry Pierce, the sewer is actually in a there's an overflow situation there, but it's under a project to be resolved within the next 12 months. Okay. So, oh yes. So, so when Project Two C gets done, it'll it'll have the capacity needed. Okay. Questions? Discussion? Oh, one quick question: Is uh, that area is that going to butt up against that Goddard and Goddard parking lot right off Central and? Uh, R. W. Gordon. No, sir. Uh, it's down. It's it's uh, south of. It's uh, south of um, of um, the gas department. This is uh, the uh, uh, Precision Products building. This is the Dollar General right here. This is uh, what used to be, I believe, the old Acme Boot or Southern Hill. Southern Hill. Used to be Southern Hill. Okay, and you know your director's in a hometown boy when he can pull that one out of his brain and remember it was Southern Hill. So, uh, yeah, the staff has no real issue with it. Um, like I said, it would meet our, you know, it meets our. It meets our minimum requirements for MRO. It would put more for potential more affordable housing, and it's just right up from a similar sure. use. Yeah, uh, David, you said that there were two or three ways that be able they would be able to get into the property. Yes, ma'am. Could you tell me the ways? I, One, I'm not seeing that real good. I'm sorry. It's okay. Nice. Well, this is R. W. Gordon Drive, uh -huh. and that is R. W. Gordon Drive right there. Uh -huh. Okay, and this, uh, so this is Central Avenue. Yep. Okay, this is Morningside over here. Okay. And then so there's this way that they could come down through here and exit out this street, Which or they way? could actually come on down around here and still exit out that street. But more Which, than likely they're gonna this, yeah. exit on the Central. There would be some that would come on over to 49 but but there would you know no matter how you slice it whether they go north or south you're going to see 246 more trips per day yeah. on that road the only thing about that concerns me of course is morning side yes ma'am and the terrible situation that we have in front of morning side yes ma'am and it is horrible yes ma'am we and know I that i understand that it's not the city's responsibility nor the county's responsibility and because I've talked to both mayors about it, but and it's the company. It's hard to drive on, isn't it? Oh, yeah. it's terrible. Yeah. Yes, so that would be my only concern about it all. But yes, yes we need the housing, affordable housing, but that is a huge concern that I've got. Yes, ma'am. I would say that you probably, once again, because of the shape of the road, anybody that moves That's in nice. there, they might go that way once. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. You said three ways. They're going to take that, that road beside Martin side. They're going to take that more than the other way. So will there well, be some road work, work actually, going over there? No, ma'am. Or actually, are they going to block it off? Actually, you know, the entrance is right here. Okay. The entrance is right here. Uh huh. And so more than likely, they would be going this way so up to Central, especially if they were commuting to Nashville or something like that because they shoot right up there, hit Central, down to Main Street, down to 431, and then on to the interstate. That little road, so that little cut of road, this right, I agree. Yes, ma'am, this, this, this little bit right that here. That little cut of road, this right there, yeah. Anybody that, that, that knows how to finagle, they're going to cut that way, but we, won't, we can't, nobody can work on it. It's, a private, it's a private road. Yes, ma'am, we've well, had... 
we've had several discussions um, the the city has with those uh, private property owners there's uh, really no good solution short, short of basically taking them to court and I don't know what's considered yeah. affordable housing in that area well that's a good question right now it looks like a house that's two hundred thousand dollar selling price is considered an affordable home mm -hmm. so to get rents lower you have to have more units to rent it's you know basic economics there supply and demand mm -hmm. so if there's a short supply prices go up if there's more of a supply prices go down David, I should know this, but I don't. What school zone? The elementary school would probably be Bransford. Middle school uh, would be. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think so. Westside. Well, I mean, is Westside from Z? Bransford just has pre-K. Okay, so Westside and uh, and then uh, the middle school would be. Uh, Crestview. Yeah, it just depends. It depends on what age kids live there as well, because I know down to New Chapel, they go to Coppertown. Ah, uh, well, some of them some go, of to go to Joe Burns. Burns. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. So it depends just on what. Wondered. Yeah. You know, really didn't look at that. Didn't think to. It may be something that. Uh, well, it will be something. We need to remember in the future to to look at the school zones there. Are these for sale or are they apartments? Rentals or condos? I, I mean, probably both. A lot of these developments, they'll sell off some, they'll keep some to rent, sometimes they'll sell them all. I haven't got that information at this point. And we don't need, this is just preliminary. I mean, we won't know uh, what the actual layout is, how they're going to do their sewers, water, um, architectural look until you know they can start building and that's going to be 12 months down the road or more I mean they could get their plan approved and be ready to go probably in about you know they could get their plan approved in approximately 60 days from a submittal and if y'all want us to we can bring that in more you know we can we, you as the Planning Commission can always request a review of any site plan under 50,000 square feet. And if y'all would like to see this again, we would be glad to bring it back to you when it's a more firm dub. I think that's a great idea. And okay. Some questions that now, we need answered. one thing I wanted to point out to you is the reason that they have these all up in this area here is, is that there is actually a stormwater drainage area here retention area that uh let's see if that one doesn't show it as well either but uh that, that's the reason all the units are to the north mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's a you know a, a city right of well easement through there for that there's a pond um that's uh right here that's got water in it all the time and then this is in a hydraulic event this is just back up and over overflow until it makes its way out of the outlet of that pond yeah I think there's some water standing on both sides of the road there at that culvert yeah uh, you know it, it's questionable whether this area right here is uh, wetlands or not it's definitely in my opinion a more hydro Philic type soil holds water pretty well but you know that sound our eye yes that sound our eye so if uh, at the present time let me rephrase that it sound our at the present time chairman okay any more questions discussion I have one but it's too deep and I probably don't need to be brought up here well no it's not too nothing's well, too deep I, no I mean um, you know I understand that's private property 
Yes, ma'am. inside. But I also know that a lot of city residents depend on that road. Yes, ma'am. Or use that road. So um, I'm just concerned about the future. Of yes, ma'am. And we and and we are as well. Um, the 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 more discussion that is had with board of mayor and alderman members will lead to a decision on how to move forward. That's the best way I can say okay. that. Miss Hope. We we have looked at this over the last several years, and the board's had the chance to vote on it probably three to four, three or four different times. And it's complicated by the fact that there are multiple property owners who own the street including um, Morningside, they're, they're one of the owners. There's also a homeowners association which has multiple property owners and the homeowners association also is defunct almost. So the more the attorneys got involved in it, the more complicated it got. And we are really tied as far as what we, we can't really enforce certain things on, on a private road like that. And so um, the last vote was not to do anything to take it over because it just, there was no easy, there's just no easy way, there's no complicated way to, to get it um, resolved since you're dealing with so many, with the homeowners association and multiple owners as well as all the multiple owners on the street. So it's been looked at a lot and there's just, we can't come up with a resolution. So I didn't want you all to think that we haven't looked at it at all because we have studied and studied it. It's terrible it, and it just gets worse all the time. And one of the owners, you know, as you probably do, will go out with sacks of concrete mix and fill in potholes, yeah. which yeah. doesn't last very long. Mm -hmm. And our emergency vehicles are having to drive over, mm -hmm. over those roads too. And it is a shortcut because that, that's the way a lot of people would be going. Mm -hmm if the road was in suitable condition. So it's sort of at a legal standoff right now. So didn't want you to think we hadn't thought about it. Thank you, <laughs> you Miss Holt. I'm sorry I didn't articulate that as well as she did. All right, uh, is there a motion to recommend a rezoning on this item? Well, I'm not hearing one. Yeah. I thought the decision was to table. get. No, nobody's made a motion to table or. No, no ma'am. No. If you, for them to move forward with the project, the property has to be rezoned MRO. Now we will bring back, y'all, since y'all have requested the final site plan and how they're going to address all their utilities, storm water, issues how you know the exact way the entrance will be and this is just a preliminary uh, plan yeah, I'm not saying it won't look a lot like that it probably will look a lot like that but we will have more details than just being able to tell you it'll be 41 units yeah what we're doing with this is just a recommendation to the mayor and alderman for rezoning yes uh, from the R15 to MRO and they can do with it with what they decide to do with it. Well, they can. Y'all have some input on that as well. Uh, like I said, we can bring it back. We'll bring it back. You know, y'all can put some tweaks on it. But you know, within the zoning ordinance, they're going to have to landscape it pretty well. They'll have to they'll have to landscape this backside here for sure. Uh, you know, there's probably going to be some sort of landscaping around it. Um, so, I mean, it's, it has potential for improvement than what it ha is now. Mr. Chairman, with the recommendation of the staff that they do not see 
any problems in moving forward with this, but the concerns that we have with more questions, I really would like to make a motion that we bring it back after some of these things that be brought back to us after some of the questions have been answered and they're just a little bit further along with you it. would table it till well next it, meeting yeah we can do that so we're understanding somebody will make a motion to table the rezoning request and there'll be a second and a vote to do so and then we will bring it back with more information and you understand their concerns, correct? So you'll be able to get all that information. I'm not real sure I do. I mean, basically what we need here is, so we're just asking for the rezone and the our client's not gonna spend the money for construction documents. That's what we're talking about bringing back to you. So we, in order for us to get the construction doc phase to give you what we would plan on actually doing with the landscaping to meet all your regulations, we've got to give them the rezone in order you know they're not they're not going to cut loose with that money to pay us to design this oh, I understand as construction that documents i'm just not understanding but there's some questions that you couldn't answer is it going to be uh, apartments for sale are they going to be for rent or you know just a few questions that we asked that i don't think we got an answer to that we'd really like an answer to before i'd feel comfortable go ahead and, and making a motion Okay. Well, what what exactly are you guys wanting to see there? Are you wanting to see rentals? Or are you wanting to see? We just want to know what the intent of the owner is going to be. I think is what I heard. Well, we know the intent is forty-one units. We don't know if they will be rentals or mm -hmm. condominium townhomes for sale or not. I would I would think that they are going to be rentals that would be where the biggest cash flow would be in the short term and in that particular area I would agree with you that probably that makes sense yes ma'am but they always have the availability in the future to come back do an HOA mm -hmm. and sell sell them off if that's what they choose to do at a later time that's the great thing about multi-residential right. but you know once you sell it unless somebody buys them all like uh, Joe Landrum did down on South Main, you know. So what was the report that we haven't gotten back yet from Mr. Beers? Was that another well, pending no. report? We, we, we did need get the report, yes. I requested sewer availability from Mr. Terry Beers. Mm -hmm. So he had stated that there is an actual an overflow problem at this site. So th there is a uh, C2, I think is the program. That, that Springfield has got underway or it will be underway and he expects that to be finalized in 10 to 12 months. So they will not be able to tie into sewer until at least 10 to 12 months. So we're just trying to get the process going because it takes a long time a lot of times. So the client said they were ready to move forward, try to get rezoned. So, I mean, as far as the MRO goes, I, I guess I would just, it wouldn't, I wouldn't think it would be. I live in an MRO townhome. I own my townhome, but the neighbor rents. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of rentals there. I live in a 108 townhome little um, development, and there's like 25 rentals there. So, you know, it could be lots, lots of different ways. They could rent all of them. They could sell some. So that's what we're just proposing an MRO so we can, we can start moving forward with the, the the process to get through council and all that so okay thank you thank you so in a nutshell the sanitary sewer is not there but it will be water availability is is there storm water is obviously there um, they may have to do some storm water quality work to get in compliance with our uh, stormwater ordinance but that's something that takes place all the time so uh, I mean really at this point they were just kind enough to let us know that they were going to do 41 units or that's what they're envisioning they didn't have to give us any of this to request the MRO zoning
Yes, ma'am. That area, that the, the vacant area on the plat there, would that be like a big detention pond? It is a, already a retention pond. It, the water, during certain times of the year, water actually stands there for a foot deep or so. You know, if you went out there today, there's water standing right in that area right now. During the, the drier months, it, it, it dries up, but it is a, a, an easement that belongs to the city for that purpose. I didn't know if that was something that would have to be engineered for, you know, something a little more permanent, I guess. Yeah, no, that's very permanent right now. What they, will have, what they would do is uh, a stormwater quality aspect. They would model to make sure that the existing pond would not overflow the road. If there is supplemental quantity needed, they would have to design that in. If this has changed to MRO and you're now you're talking about 41 units, when your site plan comes in, if staff determines that it's only good for 35, are y'all still good with that, or does it have to be the 41? Well, I mean that's a, we're meeting the zoning regs with this at an MRO, so we have to go by the city's regulations. I mean we're not just pulling this out of the air. If we're saying we'd like to go to MRO. And we're actually, I think we're way over the minimum. So you had to have 3,000 square feet per unit minimum, and we're like 5,200. So we're not putting as many as we could per the regs if you guys changed it to MRO. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we convert this um, R15 to MRO. What we're supposed to do? Second. We got a motion and a second. Yes, and so when uh, so after the vote, we'll discuss. I apologize. Jumping, jumping, jumping the gun. Okay, we're ready to vote, Gina. Miss Boyd. Yes. Mr. Townsend. This is my neck of the woods, so I'm going to go say yes. Miss <laughs> Woodard. Yes. Miss Mason. Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Pass 7 0. So, uh, per your request, we will bring back their uh, site plan that they submit. We will ensure that it meets all the requirements of landscaping and entrances and, and meets all the requirements for. Uh, everything that's needed um, like I said the so and at that time you can review it if there are things that you would like to see different or added to it it's your right to request that vote on it and say this is the way it's going to be if you want us to approve this yeah but all of that's paved that'll be a lot more runoff down in that low spot than it could be it just depends on how they how they do it how they do it you know they could do it similar to the library where you have pervious pavers. Uh, you know, there's, there's several different ways to address stormwater runoff. But yes, they're, they're presently the only, you know, the only impervious surface is that existing building and that. So they're easily doubling the runoff. And we appreciate your concern with the stormwater and stormwater quality for the city of Springfield. Well, you know, and you think about a foot sometimes right now, and you, we would hate for a small child to drown in an area like that. Yes, ma'am. And they may, you know, it may be their intent to fence that off. Yeah. Uh, might be a good idea to fence that off. So, I mean, and you're exactly right. Stay, you know, stay Safe, life safety is a big issue as well, and that's something that they, they should be willing to address. And we will, now that we thought about it, we will ask that, that take place. All right, are we ready for item number two? Well, actually, yes and no. Before we move to item number two, I would like to introduce to you our new public works director, Clayton Moore. Hello. And uh, Hello. this is... Uh, so y'all need to get in touch with him, know him. Get to, he's a, a, a engineer from uh, graduated from Ole Miss, working 
Mississippi for a while, worked at, over in Memphis for a while, and we were fortunate enough that he wanted to move to Middle Tennessee, and uh, we got him on board with us. So uh, we look forward to working with Clayton as we move forward, and uh, if y'all have any questions uh, about his uh, VITA, feel free to get with him at a later time. Welcome. I, Glad to have you. Okay, Mr. Chairman, we are now ready for the second item. Okay, item number two is uh, Continental Apartments Preliminary Site Plan. Is there a motion to put that on the floor? I'll a motion. <laughs> is there a, I think second. I got two seconds there. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we're ready to go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, Carton, Continental Apartments. Next to Robertson County Credit Union. Um, this is uh, the existing units. Well, actually, this is the existing units. This is the Robertson County Credit Union. Their proposed expansion is uh, back here. Uh, this is well within the preview of the staff to review and approve, but I didn't want to do it because the proposed entrance for these 12 units is all on Crescent Drive. Mm -hmm. So they will enter and exit Crescent here. They'll work, they can work their way to Hillcrest to get on the inter uh, on Memorial, or they can work their way back over to East Hillcrest and enter here. So that was my, my biggest concern. Now there's only 12 units. Some are most single story, one, and some of them are two story. There will only be 72 trips increase on an average daily traffic demand or projection. But uh, just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that and that y'all wanted to move forward with allowing these 12 units to be developed in back. That's the maximum number of units they can put there. There used to be a drive between the credit union and Continental where you could park around back. There used to be a swimming pool. That's correct. Uh, can it, you not, are they not going to be able to drive? Well, what's not shown here is, is that that road is only, that street is only 19 foot property line to the building. It really doesn't meet our minimum requirement. So their proposal is emergency breakaway bollards here so that these people do not exit down here on the memorial through the <coughs> Continental Apartments present entrance. And so they in an emergency situation, the, the emergency services can break away those bollards, lift them up and out, and get a vehicle through there if they had to. So it won't, so if they can't go out on the memorial through the existing roadway and meet our minimum design criteria. Something to vote on as far as yes. recommendations. If, because if you guys don't approve moving forward with this as with that proposed entrance, they won't move forward with this multifamily. Okay. Any questions? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Is there a second? I see. Was that a second, Rector? Second. Yes, sir. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Yeah, you have to be you ready to vote? Ms. Water. Yes. Ms. Mason. No. Mr. Gregg. No. 
Ms. Boyd? No. Mr. Townsend? No. no. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Allen? I'll say no to. Fails two to five. Okay, we will pass that information along to the design engineer. See if they can come up with something. They may be talking to you. It's fine. Okay, so fine. there you go. Talk to Miss Juan to see if you can get, work something out. Okay, um, Mr. Chairman. Oh, uh, well, item number three is Hillcrest Block D subdivision. Uh, is there a motion to put this on the floor? Motion. Mm -hmm. I heard it all over. <laughs> Who said over there? Alan? I second. Yeah. I didn't know which all one in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, it's on the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a uh, three lot subdivision located on 17th Avenue East. This is uh, 17th Avenue. This is the other side of Hillcrest. And uh, this is this is that RI zoning. Kim Trace is right here, former rider uh, truck terminal was there. I, I'm not sure what's there right now. Railroad track is uh, just on up this way. Um, the reason that this is proposed, three lots, one shared driveway entrance is because there is a very large drainage ditch right here. So, Mr. Arts got with Mr. Ellis and they talked back and forth and they came to the conclusion that it's better to put inch culvert in than three 48 inch culverts in such a short run so that leads to, you know, there could be multiple failures. So we can make sure that this one gets in correctly right here. And then these lots would share that entrance. They've also, this is how their driveways and parking would be on this subdivision. So this house would have its driveway and parking back here. This house would have its driveway and parking here, and same thing for this third lot, 15. So this is lot 15, subdividing it within the acceptable R10 classification to replant lot 15 into lot 15A, lot 15B, and lot 15C. Do they have any type of side rails up there where it connects into the to 17th as far as no sir if you dropped off right there you'd be dropping down your car yes, be down four feet so uh the uh uh the driveway is is uh 20 foot wide it's as wide as a is a normal road edge to edge what we would call a a, a local road so there would be you know a 10 foot lane each side now, I'm hoping that those people that live there drive Stay better than other people because most people drive their cars like transfer trucks now when they Maybe make those turns. Maybe a curb on the side or something just to... Could be. We could make that as a, make that as a recommendation to Mr. Arts, see if he could make that recommendation to the, to the owner. Any other questions? All right, we're ready for a motion then. Is there a motion to approve the subdivision? I make a motion to approve it. Got a motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. Got a second. All right, we're ready to vote, Jen. Ms. Water. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Gregg. Yes. Ms. Mason. Yes. Mr. Powell. Yes. Mr. Townsend. Yes. Ms. Boyd. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Passes seven to zero. All right, under old business and other business, uh, Oakland Farms 
phase three, section six maintenance bond. This is the first time I've had the opportunity in a long time to talk with the planning commission about a maintenance bond. Uh, Daniel Bernstein Vasquez completed section six, phase three, section six of Oakland Farms and the city of Springfield is going to accept the right of way, the easements and the infrastructure improvements through a resolution at the next board meeting, if y'all recommend to do so. I don't see how you cannot, but, and so he has put up an irrevocable letter of credit for $20,000 to uh, meet that maintenance requirement. And so if anything, if, if there, are, there are any issues during that 12 month period, we will ask him to either pay for it or we will use the money in that bond or that irrevocable letter of credit to make those repairs. After the 12th month, the city will say, we're done, it's ours, we'll maintain it from this point forward. How, how do you come up with the 20,000? Well, it's not full replacement, it's repair. And uh, so we, the most likely thing that will have to be fixed would be the pavement. If somebody was to get out there and you know, have a wreck and something caught on fire and melted the pavement or they gouged it up pretty well. 20,000 would more than adequately cover head wall replacements if a head wall was not installed properly. And, but you know, we inspected it so it shouldn't fail. But that's the public works came up with that number. We have already accepted the water in the sewer, basically, at least the department has. But if, if there were any, any issues with water and sewer, that this money could be used to repair those as well. How many feet of pavement is this, do we know? Yes, ma'am, uh, and, and I apologize for not knowing that. It's a 30-lot uh, subdivision. It uh, goes over Section 7 is to the north of it, butts up to uh, Tim Norman's property, Section 8, has just been approved mm -hmm. so it's it's the right below section eight so and i can assure well i assure you that it was tested it was bored it was sent you know we 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 feel confident that we won't have any issues we've kept we have kept these bonds in place up until now but it's you know, I'm, I'm proud to say we've finally got one done and, and able to have new road, new right of way, and infrastructure accepted by the city of Springfield. It's been, I think, since 2013 since we've done this. Is okay, is this something that you... you yes, we would need okay. a, a, a motion to recommend approval to the that Board of Mayor and Alderman. Okay. Based on the staff's recommendation that um, the amount that has been set aside for this bond will be adequate to take care of any problems that would come up during a 12-month period, I'll make a motion that we do this. Okay. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Powell? Yes. Ms. Mason? Yes. Ms. Water? Yes. Ms. Boyd? Yes. Mr. Townsend? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Passes seven to zero. Thank you. We appreciate moving this forward. We, we are glad to see Springfield growing and, and doing well. Um, our next item is annually the state requires state ethics forms from all, at least from the planning commission. Um, we're going to hand those out to you. You have the availability to mail them in. There are some instructions in there if you choose to fill them out online. If you want to, uh, if you'll bring us the paperwork, we would be glad to fill it out for you. But is this the same thing that's, that's the thing that we here? January 31st. Yeah, we had to have this yeah. done in January. Yeah. Mine's already done. Mine's gone. So they, board, they notified you per Yes. yes they just, we just wanted to make sure so okay. anybody that has not filled out these, 
you have you done I've it? Done it. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. done I it. It's for it's from it the is. state. I, yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad to see that the state's all over that because okay. we got an email from their from the economic development office, and so we just were going to. Yeah. They got our names and they yeah. send us a notice. Yeah. Yeah. Confirmation yeah. that. So we just wanted. Do you see them, Gina? No. No. Those are. I, mean, I don't. I haven't done one for the state. I don't think. Okay. Well, let us get you that paperwork, Mr. Powell. Yeah. Email it to. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So if you will, if you want us to get that filled out, we'll be glad to mail it for you. Okay. Just get it to Miss Gina. Mine. Look at y'all being all technologically advanced. Uh, this is probably about the third or fourth or fifth year that um, Gina gave it to me. Yeah. Gave me that, and then I just yeah. did it online. You may have, uh, oh, you may have missed that, one no, when they started it, and they just never got your name. Okay. But if you will uh, get that, feel free to mail it yourself or let us okay. mail it. But just let us know that you've gotten it sent in. Okay. You can do that online. You just you know, go set it up and send your information in. Okay. We'll still get the ethics form from the city. Though. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, we, we, we want to be an ethical organization. Okay, uh, the next item is uh, there will be a Board of Zoning Appeals meeting in February. There is one request, and it is a conditional use request for Beauty from Ashes, which is, uh, and it's at 500 Josephine Street, and Gina's been handling this, and I will let her do a better description of what this conditional use is. Okay, Beauty for Ashes, um, it's a healing place is how they, they their title is, and it's a nine-month in-house Christ-centered program for women in addiction. Um, their women are supervised 24-7 during their stay, and they're asking the appeals board to approve their permit for to house their women at 500 Josephine Street. Um, they uh, are uh, just running out of room where they're at now. I think is what they're they're um, is what Miss Parrish Tammy Parrish is the one who is my authorized agent that I contact. So that she told me they were running out of room. Um, they were trying to get another facility, and this is where they have chosen and the people the people who own the property are um hold on i think their last name oh here it is frank and deborah smith i, I don't know them i don't know any some of you may know them um they live um on Hi old highway 41 south greenbrier tennessee but they own this property in within the city and uh, i mean I, I have already sent out the um adjoining property owners and, and across the street. Um, as of yet, I haven't gotten anything back from anybody telling me they're against it or for it either way. Um, I've had a couple of phone calls from uh, evidently some people who are um, affiliated or they help with it or they help with the um, maintenance of it monetarily and um, telling me that this is a good program. You know it, Miss Wanda. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. okay. It is a good program. Now, is this a house addition to the to the one they already, to the one they already have? Uh, or is yes. This a larger. House? Well, I mean, the house may be larger than the one that they're currently in. I'm I'm not real sure about that, but um, they just said that they're running out of room right now, and uh, they're wanting to continue their program. So they have got this into me as a conditional use permit. I think they can house six. Uh, the, at the house they're in. That they're in now? Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, I knew it was probably five to seven. It's probably what they had currently or something. Because that's usually the norm. So, Gina, what are we needing to do? Uh, well, I mean, we're... are making us aware? Of we're it? making you aware. If you have any concerns, if you have any um, thing that I need to take, comments I need to take to the board, to the BZA board, then that's what... I'm bringing this to you for. Well, I have known several people that work with these ladies, and um, I know one of my board members, Mark Reed, his wife from White House has worked with the this program, and um, I just know Sh Sheila Bird has worked with. I know a lot of people, and probably you do too, that's worked with this program, and they've had a lot of success with it. And it's just 
in this day and time, it's something that we need to offer. And our, you know, our, I think it's a good thing. Okay. And we will relay the planning commissions. Be, yeah. And, and I, I'm so glad you've sent the letters out to the neighbors because that is important. Well, I'm required to do that. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, that's, that's something that, and I try to get them out early yeah, so good. they have plenty of time to either come in and talk to us about it or to call in. And I mean, they're always welcome at the meeting. You know, sometimes they, people can't make the meetings. And I'm, I don't think, but I'm not sure, you know, my note, I don't think this is associated with any kind of drug program or anything like that. I think it's just bad choices made in life and they're needing help. That's what I understand. But okay. So. I'll, I'll probably find out more about that probably tomorrow or Monday. Because they go next Tuesday, mm -hmm. right? Yes. The 11th. They will be at the BCA yeah, on the, the 11th. 11th. Yeah. Okay, now not on the list, TV's off, not on the list is uh, one little item that I was just going to bring up. Uh, we as staff are going to make a change to the way the agenda is done. Uh, we are going to add the phrase similar to the Board of Mayor and Alderman um, to uh, discuss and possibly take action. And then that way, you only have to make, there only has to be a motion and a second to talk about it, and then there has to be a motion to approve and then a vote. So you don't have to do two votes to, on an item. So we'll clean that up, maybe streamline our process in anticipation of longer agendas. Okay, and that wraps us up. And if uh, y'all have any questions or need anything, you know where we're at. Uh, we're right upstairs. And if you have any questions or would like to get to know Mr. Moore a little bit better, he'll be out at Public Works. We understand, not understand, but get caught up to how things run here in the city of Springfield. But he seems to be a quick learner, so we're uh, very appreciative to have him on board. Thank you. Do we have anything else? Just a quick question. Uh, a couple of years ago, did we have plans for that uh, building next to the dollar store? If you're looking at the dollar store to the left, uh, I don't know what it is, Garden Garden Building? It's a plant factory that's going downhill fast. Yes. And I thought we had plans for it three or four years ago. Well, it's, I think it's more than three or four years ago. At one time, uh, the, it, it's owned by the water department, water and wastewater department. They had uh, engaged an architect, and they had developed plans to refurbish and save the building. But the, our board of mayor and aldermen chose not to spend that money at that time due to the large amount of money that was being spent on the administrative order of consent for sanitary sewer overflows. So, and we didn't technically. Yeah, there. You know, when you engage an architect, you pay in yeah. phases. You know, if 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 you move forward with the project, then you can continue to pay. But we didn't, so they didn't get all of their fees that it's just would, they would have had we turned into an eyesore real fast. So I think it's going to yes, sir. Right. You know, it's just like any building. Once once the roof is gone, the building's. You know, it's still savable, but it won't be savable long. That's it for me. All right. Anything That's it for else? me. Are we ready to adjourn? Yes, yeah. Sounds good to me. Thank y'all.